Hey everyone, my name is Aiden Walls. This channel is dedicated to retro gaming and retro handouts. If that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing. I've seen a ton of very complex tutorials on getting widescreen hacks for your emulated games. I tested the Genesis Plus GX Wide emulator on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, which is nice, but there's a lot of graphical artifacts when you're actually using that widescreen hack. So last night I was playing Sonic and I simply tried stretching to 16 by 9 and it looked okay actually, but the pixels get stretched and start to look a little strange. Then I remembered shaders and added a shader and I like the one called Beam under CRT shaders. So in this video I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial, an easy simple guide on how to do this on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus or on any Android device. And on Linux, I'm using the RG351P for my example. Okay, so for this example, let's get open a Mega Drive game on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. We're gonna open Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And then go into your Retro Arch menu, however you've set up your hotkeys. Mine is to press this down and press the X key. Now we're in our Retro Arch menu. And also your menu might look a little bit different if you haven't enabled this XMB theme. You might have to just pay attention to that. Either change your theme or just pay close attention to the little features that I'm gonna show you now. Let's go to settings. So we wanna go to the settings section. We're gonna go to video. I'm gonna go into video here. I'm gonna go down to scaling. And then I'm gonna go here to aspect ratio and I'm going to scroll up. You can either say full, at the bottom it says full, which is gonna give you full screen. This is a 16 by nine screen, so I'm gonna select the 16 by nine screen to fill it up to the screen that we have on this device. So now if you exit to the game, the pixels look a little bit funny and a little bit stretched. Um, it does smooth it out a little bit. It's, it's not ideal, I, th I think it looks okay, but I feel like it could look better. It looks a little bit janky, like a little bit kind of makeshift. And then I remembered shaders. So what I did, did was, okay, go back into Retro Arch. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure we're in the quick menu, and then we scroll down to shaders. Now I spent a little bit of time, enable shaders, and I, I looked for a shader that I was happy with. I just like this, so I went to CRT, because CRT is the old fashioned screens, it's, it's kind of em emulating. And I found the CRT beam, which gives it a bit more of a crisp look and, and hides those squashed pixels. So if we go in here now and we've selected that and we go out and we go back into the game, I'm gonna to struggle to show you this, but it's aliasing a little bit because it's actually making the screen look like an olden day screen. But it makes it look a little bit more crisp than when it was just kind of soft and mushy before this. I'm happy with this. Maybe you don't like and you can try a different shader, but I really like this. It looks like an old screen. It, it's got a, a good look to it. Now what we need to do is, you're gonna be in the quick menu when you when you go into RetroArch and you scroll down to overrides. Now, if you decide you want to save this to the entire game catalog, then say save content directory overrides or save core overrides, then the core or the directory where the, the ROMs are saved, all those games are going to look like this. Uh, or you can just say save game overrides. I'm going to say save content directory overrides because I really like this for the Mega Drive system. So I'm gonna use my Mega Drive like this on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Okay, so this isn't everyone's cup of tea. That beam CRT filter shader might not be for you. You can have a look for one that makes you happy. I just like the way it makes a screen look. It makes it look like an olden day screen. It gives it a bit of a crisper look than just a soft mushiness when I changed it to 16 by nine. But overall, I really like this as a 16 by nine hack for my Mega Drive system. And this will work for everything. Every system you can do this, but I, I've just tested it on the Mega Drive and I know it looks really nice and I'm happy with that. Like I really love the look of that, it, it looks old school. Okay, as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to do this on my favorite Linux system on the RG351P on Ambe Elec. So with Ambielec, it tries to manage a lot of the way that RetroArch works within the menu system. We're going to do this a little bit differently than on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. We're going to use the menu system to our advantage. So instead of going into a game and then going into RetroArch, we're just going to navigate to our game category. In this case, it's Mega Drive. And we're gonna use the Sonic 2 game as an example again. Okay, so I'm going to press select because I wanna change the whole Mega Drive system and how it's going to look. Go down to advanced options. If you wanna change this one game, just press X once you've hovered over to your game and go to advanced game options. So same thing, just a different menu selection. You see here's that, that wide 
emulator again. I don't want to use that because I don't really like the way it does all those graphical anomalies. We're going to go to game aspect ratio and we're, we're going to set it to three by two. The RG351V has a Game Boy Advance aspect ratio of three by two. So we're going to select three by two. Now I've gone around looking for filters and shaders and everything and I just decided to go for, I found this shader and it's called Community Handout LCD Sharp by Linear. And it, it tries to make it look like a cheap handheld screen, which I just felt smooths the, the, the pixels out a little bit. So this is how it looks with this community filter over it, the shader. And you can see it's, it's stretched to the full entirety of the screen. And I think it's evened out the pixels nicely and uh, it's a nice wide angle experience. And then if we disable that quickly so you can see how it looked before. So this is how it looked before and we'll kick quickly cut back to the, the widescreen hack. and. You'll see how the, the, the pixels are, you know, this is not the greatest quality screen. So it already looks okay now, but with the wide angle, it does look a little bit better. So this is the screen uh, before we've added the shader, the three by two wide screen without a shader. And here it is with the shader hack and it's just smoothed out ever so slightly. If you look at the little sparkles and finer details of each character, they're just smoothed out ever so slightly. On this hack, because of the, the poor quality of the screen, you know, the shade is not essential, but it does add a slight little veneer of professionalism to it. And that's it, it's a very simple, no fuss way to get a nice full screen experience from your Android or Linux handheld. I chose the RG351P as a companion in this video because it does have that strange GBA aspect ratio for retro gaming. Brilliant for GBA, but pretty much average for everything else. So you kind of got to make a workaround with this device. And then obviously the RP3 Plus has a wonderful screen, but just needs some love to make it feel retro. I'm quite excited about the fact that I figured this out for the Retro Pocket 3 Plus because it, it just gives it an nice retro feel because before the shaders it, it just looked stretched and pretty bland and then as soon as I add that shader on I just feel like it turns into a nice little retro device and on a lovely stretched out wide angle screen.